the ruck. For Frankston and Port Melbourne, respectively. And away we go in this one. With the Dolphins looking to get the first clearance. And Gray, so good last week in the loss to Williamstown. Going a wider to Johnson. Ball near the line. And we'll have it thrown in. So we talked in the last call, Pete, about the wind and how it's changed throughout the day. Now it's coming across to the broadcast side, so across the field, which will play havoc with some, some kicking. So teams might want to run the ball a little bit more. Lockhart with the front position for Port Melbourne on that occasion. Hooper went without it. Murphy's there for Frankston. Just trying to find some space. Minot, the captain, puts it inside 50. Clash of bodies here. Someone should just swoop in on the football. No one can. It's right to the line. Trying to work hard there is Lockie Rankin for the Port Melbourne side. The umpire will come in and intervene. It is high pressure early, isn't it? Early stages of this opening quarter. Here at ETU Stadium. Here's Rankin again. We'll just look to clear the area for Port Melbourne. We see the ball taking off with that breeze and Miller. Might have been hands in the back, but he's been paid the mark. And they get some run through the middle of the ground. Barnes heads up towards centre half forward, but it's going to come back. There may only be temporary relief for Frankston. Let's see. Voss getting through some traffic. Had to keep his feet. Managed to get the handball away. A little bump after Smith released that footy, but he still got the kick away and the mark being taken there by Grant. The tackle just needed to be held. He just let him free. Yes, that's a long high kick. Not much happening inside 50 for the Dolphins. At the bottom of that pack was Burke for Frankston. And Rankin there again, just gathering some early footy. You can hear that wind in our effects mics, as Jim mentioned, blowing across the ground. Quirk working with Minots. Off a step, O'Leary. Deep ball inside 50. No mark taken. They've got a bit of run. Johnson dragged down in the tackle. Good pressure from the Port Melbourne defenders. Fun Port Melbourne, though. The speed with which Frankston was able to move that ball from D50 into attack is dangerous. You want to really force them to move the ball a bit slower down the field. So the ball heading towards goal here for the Dolphins. It's going to hit the behind post. We'll have it tossed in. Adam Scrabalak at the... Still in charge of the Port Melbourne side as coach. Interestingly enough, got Danny Ryan as one of his assistant coaches, who was formerly the head coach at Frankston. Jackson Kornberg now taking that role. And Josh Butlin going nowhere. We'll have it tossed up again. 150th year for the borough. Yeah, plenty of celebrations. You see that the 150th logo on the scarves and all sorts of uh, merchandise as this ball's going to be held up in the middle of the grounds. Lots of club events and things like that happening as well, which is good fun. The VFLW side obviously trying to go back to back. We see in this shot the uh, premiership flag that they unfurled earlier today. And then tied down so the spectators could see what was going on in the first five rows of the grand stair. Probably a smart move in the end. I'll, I'll go with you on that, Gemma. As Given the wind. Yeah, now with Milne goes around the body inside 50. Again, no mark taken, but an opportunity ball there from Butlin going up to the top of the goal square. And here's Noah Gown. First shot at goal for Frankston. Dangerous last week. He kicked three goals from eight touches, but it's just positioning, isn't it? He stayed in the goal square. His defender tried to come up to the contest to impact the play, but they just needed to pop it over the top and trust that he was going to be there. So top of the goal square. I think the breeze won't have much of an effect on this kick. And no problem there. The first for the Dolphins for the afternoon. Here at Port Melbourne, he mentioned there Frankston going down to Williamstown last week and well, they got close at times, but then the Seagulls able to kick clear. Gowan, as you mentioned, with those three goals. We had Sebastian Quirk with 26 disposals. George Gray, who's in the state squad mm -hmm. for next year, that uh, next year, next week. That's going to be narrowed down, I think, sometime during... 
next week? Surely next week. Joey, have to be, Joey I guess. would know. Joey Pignataro would know. He's all over it. He wants his man Louis Pinnock to be in, West Werribee player. But obviously Don Brew got announced as the captain of the state side, former Werribee co-captain. So keeping it in the family there. I suspect there might be some more discussed on the State of Play podcast, which Gemma <laughs> unfortunately doing the heavy lifting for. There's this ball back in the middle. The absolute irony of that, given the amount of work Joey puts in. Well, I don't see it. As uh, work here, Curry. And half back, just trying to clear it is Quirk. And now, good use of the footy. Down again. He could have two in a minute. It's just that really aggressive attack from the Dolphins, isn't it? Coming out of the middle, they know that they just want to gain ground and get it into his hands. And all they need to do is pop it out into space. They know that he'll get there. So Noah Gown. AFL experience that he does bring to the table. Oh, oh dear. So he'll still remain just with the, the one goal. He's come up a little bit proppy from that marking attempt and that he's tried to take his time to get his body feeling a little bit better, but he's a little bit proppy with the way he's walking, trying to work that pain out of his, I think, right leg. So coming across from Sandringham last season. Here's Tom Hurd for Port Melbourne. A couple of years now on the list as this has been turned over. Murphy will go with a long kick inside 50. Another mark! Boy, they're marking them, clunking them nicely inside 50, the Dolphins. And it's Butlin this time who will have the shot at goal. All the Dolphins need to do is pop it up and they know someone will get there, don't they? Those are strong hands though, under pressure. The wind has dropped away a little bit here, so best to make the most of these opportunities while there's less interference with the ball. So Josh Butland. Another year on the Dolphins list. And a goal to the tally. Fast start here from the away team. They got two on the board early. Yeah, they'll be pleased with the way they've started today. And last week was not a disappointing performance, obviously disappointing with the loss, but they finished 19th last season. The only teams that they beat were Sandringham, Sydney, the Bull Ants and Coburg. So not any big hitters in that group. Sandringham, probably the best of them. They'll, they'll want to get some wins on the board early this year to show that they've improved. Um, and I think we, we have seen that just in this style of play as well, really aggressive. And also the other thing too, just looking ahead, I mean, we keep it one game at a time, of course, Gemma, but they, everyone's got the bye in the Smithies VFL next week with the, the state game, but also they have the bye the week after as well. So they've got a two-week break coming up here, Frankston, as Murphy will go across the grounds. Under pressure is Gray, and he's immediately set upon... The umpire says holding the footy. So chance here for Port Melbourne. As this ball will go deep inside the 50. Long ball all the way to the back. And again, just carrying there. So we saw to that end of the ground in the Rebel VFLW game earlier. It got a lot of carry to the Fred Cook end or the right of screen. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just about being able to navigate that. I know we talk about wind a lot, especially at these community grounds, but it does have such an impact on the way you want to play. It affects your game style. It affects how you want to execute. It affects how confident you are when taking risks as well. So it's about making the most of all those things and seeing where you can come out on top. So here's Rourke Smith, also in the state squad. Goes around the body with a high ball, but plenty of numbers here for the Dolphins, but it's going to come straight back in again. It's Rankin, managing to shoot that handball out. Now the kick going forward. A couple of uh, flyers there for the Borough. Plenty staying down for the Dolphins, and they managed to release. Here's Gray. Good last week. Handball into the middle of the ground, and they've got the overlap run. Reedy. Handball over the top. It's worked out nicely. Riley has got O'Leary. And that's a spearing pass inside 50. Great transfer of the footy by the Dolphins. And Matt Johnson will have the shot at goal. We said earlier, Pete, that the, the speed that the Dolphins are getting when 
that slingshot out of defence and into a genuine attacking opportunity should be worrying Port Melbourne at this stage. How can they slow that ball movement down to give their defense, defenders a chance? So Matt Johnson. Another the Frankston players staying on their list. Oh. And that's going left, yeah. just left. Nearly came back, just not enough. Tom Murphy already has seven disposals for the game, and Nick Burke has three clearances, so Dolphins getting on top around the contest early. Tom Highmore kicks to Rankin. You're laughing because I nearly fell over just then. Uh, Hooper, I wonder what was going <laughs> on. I thought it was the chair, not you, but anyway. The skipper of this Port Melbourne side, and the long kick, the fist coming in from Jimmy Miller. And we'll have it tossed in. I am known to fall over when I'm commentating with you. Famously fell in the mud at Box Hill. Had to commentate covered in mud, so... That I'm, wasn't funny at all. I'm in a much better position now than I was then. Ball tossed back in. Now, vantage point here at ETU Stadium. It happens to the best of us. As <laughs> work here, Riley. Williams, and his kick's been turned over. Rossman's got it. We have players that have spent some time on, on list. Fraser Rossman's good oh. to see his development. And as soon as I say, of course that was going to happen. Marotta gets in the way. Now he's 55 from goal, assessing what he should do. Does he go the trip? There's some leading options deep in the pocket here. One of those is Josh Butland. That's going to be ignored. Still space to lead into, though. So Trent Marotta. He's going to go long and high. Has it got the trip? Not quite. It's at the top of the goal square, though. Plenty of numbers converge. Heard just losing a handle on the footy. Maybe he could have been a port player taken without it. Nothing doing, says the umpire. The clearing kick may only be temporary. It's going to be cut off. Here's Milne. Tyson Milne. Goes inside 50. That's almost a high tackle. Well done by Rankin, though, just to hold that footy in. And we'll have it tossed up. GP, if I'm Butland, I'm frustrated at how that played out earlier. Just needed to turn and kick into space in attack. Did Morota, but now it's no score and, and back in con the contest. So quick decisions. We talk about being able to make quick decisions all the time. That was a, an opportunity to do so missed. So the ball tossed up again. Pack of players, Hooper's just going to clear the area. A long ball up towards half forward, Barlow. Just getting the drop on his man as they come racing towards the footy. Milne, go around the body. And a good mark, Smith. Josh Smith takes it. Goes wider. Her, uh, to Williams. It's into the middle of the ground. They're taking their time, Barlow. He's got O'Leary. Wide up, decides to go up the line to Reedy. But this Reedy. is what we mean. They might be possessing the footy, but Port Melbourne has forced them to go slower so they're able to defend and come across like they've just done there. With Rossman, who's taken the mark. Are you going to burn him again? I am not. <laughs> the kick is, well, looking for Tom Highmore. They didn't find him, found the boundary line instead. Tom Highmore... The other state squad players for... Not happy about that either. No, three players for Port Melbourne in that squad. Rock Smith, Tom Highmore and Harvey Hooper. It's a great name. It is double H, H squared. There's Minot, the captain of the Dolphins. Kicks inside 50. Nunes just stayed down. Good experience. Now he's laying the tackle. Great work. Should be rewarded. Yeah, it's insufficient intent. He'll take the free kick. Experienced player, Jack Nunes. And he will have the shot at goal, though it's going to be tough with the way the breeze and where it's blowing at the moment, Gemma. He, hasn't he famously kicked an important goal from a boundary before? It has, <laughs> but the breeze like this. The kick misses Missed. narrow. <laughs> it was close, though. <laughs> Highmore's not happy at the moment with his teammates. It just needs to control the controllables, which is such a cliche, but 
just keep running those patterns. Your teammates will start to, you know, connect with you a little bit more. Oh, Gahan, has he kept that in? Yes, he has. That ball went very wide from Rankin. He has to go across the ground. Coglin goes wider. Can we get this exit ball here? The Borough. Walker will just go across to Hurd. Tom Hurd, couple of years on the Port Melbourne list. Looks up and doesn't see a lot that he likes in terms of options. Rankin's the option there. That kick a little bit too high. O'Leary providing the pressure, but Frankston will have it over the line. We're seeing Port Melbourne not wanting to take that risk of the kick into the into the corridor. It's forcing them wide and it's forcing them to retreat a lot as well. Frankston's pressure is just squeezing them into the front half. And it continues. It's going to be a free kick to O'Leary. Hasn't got a nickname yet, it seems. He's just known as his first name, Blake, as the kick goes inside 50. The tall target there was Marotta. Ball off hands. High more. It's going to be turned over again. The skipper's got it. Minutes goes across the ground. This should be cut off. Seeing Rello. Oh, he copped one as he went for that mark. He's okay. He has to get back in the contest. And the umpire will come in and intervene. Just had flashes of Mason Wood there when he got caught in the middle and nearly flipped completely in the air. Oh, he's okay as he moves away from that contest. It's a ball here. Oh, almost uh, high more, looking for the free kick. That's almost holding two. The umpire choosing to let it go. And the clearing ball from Watson. Getting front position, Moran. Did you, good job to get around his would-be opponent there. There's Gray, short ball, and that's good. And they've worked this out nicely because Lockie Reedy is the player who's got it. And he's a chance at adding the third here for Frankston in this opening term. Yeah, it's all about that squeeze, isn't it? Port Melbourne just has no option when it goes to rebound out of defence. See the inside 50s, 11 to 4 in favour of Frankston. Now, is this ball going to come back? Yeah. They've had a couple of siders of it on this side of the ground. And another case of just missing. It was bending the right way. It just got touched as it, as it hit the line, but... They're trying to make the most of the wind with the way they're kicking the footy. Well, this hasn't been touched by anyone. And it has gone out of bounds. But it will be thrown in on that outer side. Just spying to see whether my all-time favourite player in this competition, Anthony Anastasio, the igniter, is on the ground. So noticing that he's got an assistant coaching role with the club. There's a few clubs that have gone that way this year in particular. I noticed Williamstown has got a few of their W players also part of their coaching panel as well. As this ball, Smith, just stood underneath it for the Dolphins. Just losing a handle on it is Milne. They come flying in over the top. There is the igniter just getting a little touch on it. His skipper, though, goes inside 50. And a good kick. And Cingarello kicked a couple last week for the Borough up there at Fankhauser Reserve. Kicked three goals in the loss to Southport first up. Got one directly in front here. It shows what Port Melbourne is able to do once they're able to exit that defensive 50, really. Steps in. Couple of steps. And kicks the goal. So they're on the boards. And the Borough get their first goal of the afternoon. In case you didn't realise. So and now... And, uh, okay, they're firing up the crowd as well. <laughs> uh, so they've got their first goal of the board. But again, that's stemming the tide a little bit because it's been all to the left of screen in this opening quarter. Yeah, to be honest, if I'm Franks, and I'm frustrated that I'm only nine points up because... They have had the run of the play. They've kicked two goals from six scoring shots and have really worried Port Melbourne in that back half. They've looked really lost um, when trying to get the ball out of defensive 50 and for, for the Borough to then just get into that forward half and actually just convert. 
it's frustrating if you're Frankston, but it's a good sign for Port Melbourne that even under the most pressure, they're able to rebound and bounce back in that way. So it's setting us up for a really tight, contested game. Flockhart gets it down, but it's gone straight the way of the Dolphins, work his way through. Reedy, the first and second efforts were superb, and this ball inside 50 again. Rankin coming out to meet it for Port Melbourne. His ball going around the body into plenty of open space. Who's coming out to meet it? It's Moran. Goes with the, the looping handball. Quirk. Well, he assessed his options. Wanted to go short. Not the best. And Rourke Smith takes the mark. You mentioned he's in the squad for the big V game. Who, Pete, has to be? Oh, no. As this ball's turned over, it's heading towards goal. Smith again. Can he make amends? He does as they switch to the grandstand side of the ground. Walker. He looks up. He was thinking of going grandstand side. He wanted to switch. Then he goes at the grandstand side anyway. And that's why he was hesitating because there's a lot of white jumpers. And Voss was one of those. Sending Frankston back inside 50. It heads towards the line. We'll have it thrown in. I'll go back to my question, Pete. Who, in your eyes, has to be in the team come next week? Oh, the problem is, with it, is it's so early this year. So it's hard to assess. Yes. Based off, normally you've got about 10 weeks or, you know, 15 weeks to make your decision. We've only got two, and most of it is exposed pre-season form before we actually can select the actual squad. Sounds like you're just skirting the question. Very much so. As Moran <laughs> goes across the ground to Voss. And coming through there, Rossman. Yeah, he got over the shoulder. It's going to be a Frankston free kick, and they want to get on with it quickly. Nunes putting the ball inside 50. Johnson can't trap it, and we'll have it tossed in. Someone you'd like to see in the team then, Pete? Well, Anastasio is not in the squad, so that... Uh, so you can't just have an easy answer. I can't. Let me think about it. As the <laughs> ball's tossed back in. I was pleased that Don Brew was announced as captain, though. I'll say that. We had Nick Coughlin on the podcast last week, and he has nothing but the most respect for Don Brew, his former co-captain taken over for him obviously this year for Werribee and here's Marotta who's got the free kick let's see what he can do from the grandstand side of the ground there are leads coming in from everywhere now let's see if this time he can get the trip trip is no problem accuracy an issue and through for another behind peppering the goals but even then, like you do know that you want to be hitting hitting goals in those circumstances, but at least Frankston have been able to dominate that territory. So while it's not quite working for them in terms of absolutely dominating on the scoreboard, they're really stressing Port Melbourne. As Owens getting hands to it. Quirk caught up in the tackle. And the ball will be tossed up. Frenetic start, particularly from the Dolphins. Ball going nowhere in a hurry. Hands and knees curry. First and second efforts were excellent. The ball partially smothered. Here's Quirk. High ball. They fly oh. from all directions. Goodness me. Rosberg got up high too. And they should clear again. Port Melbourne. Smith high up and under kick. And Flockhart, the big man, takes the mark. He just had to sit under that. He knew bodies were coming. Speaking of sitting under it, he wants to go to his fellow Ruckman and Hofords, but that's out of bounds on the full and will be turned over. So Josh Smith. There's his kick. Will drop short and will be turned over again. Coglin, Liam Coglin. Across to Highmore. And they'll go wider. Smith. Short. 
Rossman. They just seem tentative, don't they, when they are getting actual change of possession in the back half. They seem nervous to pull the trigger on, on a slightly riskier kick. And it hasn't served them very well, Port Melbourne, in terms of that rebound ability. So Rankin. Short. Rossman. So Gemma mentioned a good crowd here at ETU Stadium this afternoon. This is Smithy's BFL clash. And that high ball. Here's the igniter getting onto it. Wrapped up in the tackle. Needs to lay the tackle himself. And the umpire will come in and throw the ball up. Uh, just an update on the other games happening in the VFL today. Coburg is currently trailing Williamstown by 14 points at Highgate Recreation Reserve. The Lions got a two-point win over Collingwood at Brighton Homes Arena and North Melbourne beat Carlton by 16 points at Arden Street earlier today as well. So it's going to be a free kick here after that ball went over the line. Tane Barlow will take it. Just dealt with after that footy crossed the boundary line. The kick. A two on two contest. Owens, did he have his arms chopped? The umpire says yes. Go short. Voss will go backwards. That hasn't hit the target, but Barlow's got plenty of time. So he can steady in defensive 50 and set the Dolphins up again. So they go from one side of the ground to the other. Look at him move it quickly. He's Milne. That kick's going to drop short, but it's okay. Dana has got it. Short. Gray. Thinking about going into the corridor. It's looking around. Decides to go with that option. Milne thought about going. Now does. Long ball. Going to drop short inside 50 for the Dolphins. And Quirk's wrapped up in the tackle. We'll have it thrown up. The Dolphins spread once they win the footy is super impressive. They are forcing the Burroughs defence to be aware of the full width of the ground, which makes it incredibly hard to defend those forward 50 entries. As here, Nana has got it. And he's just off target. But yeah, once they, once they win the footy in the back half, even though that kick to switch earlier wasn't the neatest and was a little bit dangerous... The fact that he was able to collect the footy, immediately turn and have options right across the width of the field allowed them to, to just move it really quickly back into oh. their attacking half. Well, that's judged to have hit the ground. Watson just looking for the slips catch. And the umpire says, nope, we're going to call play on and now he'll throw it up. Dangerous for Port Melbourne to be trapped again. All held up. Talk about names for the, the state squad. That was a holding free kick. I'll come back to that in a moment, Gemma. Rochetti has got it. And his kick is a, a long one, carrying a little bit with the breeze. Juggler from Miller. And he set Vickers running. Up towards centre half forward goes the kick. Almost the mark there to Billy Gowers. Now wrapped up in the tackle. He won't get the opportunity to have a shot at goal. And that is quarter time. 2-6-18. Frankston, plenty of scoring shots and maybe a little bit of push and shove as well. Inside 50 counts. 17-8 to eight in that opening quarter in favour of Frankston. The margin, though, just 11 points as we're away in the second quarter. Flockhart getting the tap down, but it's Murphy taking away and the Dolphins will have first use of it at the start of this second quarter. And here's Nick Burke who's got it. He'll have, looking maybe to have a shot just outside the 50. We'll see. As we wait, see what this breeze does. Oh, he's got someone driving by. It's Moran. He'll load up from outside 50. A really floating sort of ball, which did make the trip and threw for a behind. Dolphins look really dangerous out of stoppage, even though... Uh, Port Melbourne has had the hit-out dominance. They've had 15 hit-outs to the Dolphins' seven. They're just sharking the taps, really, um, and just being really powerful, and immediately out of stoppage, they're attacking ball movement. They're not 
flicking it around by hand. They're immediately kicking forward to create that territory dominance. From there, they can build. Nastasio just overrunning the footy. Off a step is Milne for Frankston. And that's a nice pluck again from Butland. And will he decide to go the trip? Shaping up to do it. Marotta's on the goal line for the Dolphins. Let's see what he can do. This will be a good test to see what the Breeze is doing as well. The kick has got plenty of distance, just not the accuracy through for another behind. The, the wind does randomly drop away though, so he's trying to adapt to the wind. And it's just not working with him either because that, that happened at the other end of the ground too. Right as he went to take the kick, he was shaping to, to handle it and the wind drops away right at the moment that you don't want it to. So it's really hard to predict how to navigate it. They asked the question in the opening quarter about the state team and yeah. who would be locks in there. Talk to me. Kai DeClaes is one. We, where have you just picked up where he left off last season? Brandon Crosley I'd probably put in as... The Ruck yep. from Southport, to name a few. It's got, a couple of good names. Got one on your list? Cal Brown was mine. Um, Box Hill, he's been a pretty handy state league player since he finished up at Collingwood. There's Burke trying to drag this one around, peppering the goals again. Flockhart looking a little bit worse for wear after that contest just outside 50 as well. himself in back to the middle of the ground. And meanwhile, Port Melbourne will look to exit this 50. Here's Baker Smith. Short ball. And here's Rankin. Who's got really no one to kick to, so he has to go short and find his captain in Hooper. And Hooper will go long this time to go down the line. Rock Smith was underneath it, couldn't complete the mark. Numbers here with the Dolphins, and they managed to work it into the middle of the ground. Marotta getting hands to it. Coming through quickly was Highmore. Dragged down in the tackle, maybe not in possession. As this ball's going nowhere, Barnes will be held up, and the umpire will toss it up. Port Melbourne looked dangerous once they're able to get that next possession out of 50, so that they're generally able to find that first mark. But it's finding that second possession that they've struggled with. But once they do get it, they become score genuine scoring chances. Here's the igniter. Anastasio breaks one tackle. Can't break the second. I think he's been picked for holding the footy. He has. He took him on. It didn't quite work. I'm hoping it will at some stage this afternoon. So Josh Smith has got it for Frankston. It's a clean tackle too for a big man on a, on a not so big man. Ball's pushed into space and will eventually spill out to George Gray. Certainly player to watch this season for the Dolphins. Dragged down the tackle by the igniter. That's a little bit of what he can do. And Anastasio will send him inside 50. They need a bit of a spark here, the Borough. Ball falls to the back. Milne just handballed blindly. Still heading towards goal. Coming out to meet it was Barlow for Frankston. And now we've got a ball that's... Well, they're working out what they're going to do with it here. There's a conversation between the goal umpire and the field umpire. Has it snuck in? Is it out of bounds on the foot? Where is the footy? There it is. It'll be a free kick to the Dolphins. Milne to take it. Last line of defence... Just send it to that grandstand side. All falls to the back. Rankin will get it back. Owens just thumped it straight back to him. And Cigarello, all on his own, will come in and take the mark. Kicked a goal in the opening quarter. The lone goal for Port Melbourne. Chance at his seconds. Nope, he's going to go shorts. And this will be okay. <laughs> thought for a second there that... Uh, they were going to make the wrong decision, but the decision is right. And when you want to make the right decision, you send it to your captain and say, you kick it. It's a pretty smart choice to 
pass over responsibility to your captain, no? I would think so. <laughs> Good business practice if you're in the team. So, Harvey Hooper. Gets a trip, no problem. Oh. Again, just across to that left-hand side. Port Melbourne do look really dangerous once they can get it past that first half, though, and find a bit of possession in their front half. That's why it's so damaging that Frankston has been so dominant around the contest because they're able to get the quick clearance and then gain the ground. So for Port Melbourne, it's about escaping the forward press. Once they're out of there, they do look pretty dangerous. So here's Riley to Williams, Max Williams, to a running O'Leary who can take a bounce here at ETU Stadium. Inside, wow, that carried the pack. Nunes was there, couldn't get near it in the end. Heard just throws it onto the boot, right in the path of Reedy, got hands to it, couldn't complete the mark. Now can they get some run going, the Borough? Work in the middle of the ground. Hooper deciding to go wide on this occasion. Across to Billy Gowers, plenty of experience. Just takes his time, just a little chipping ball, and they're trying to paddle it forward. The numbers, though, with the Dolphins. Still in the middle of the ground on that grandstand side. And it's going to be a holding the footy decision. That one's... It's a tough one, isn't it? Because Gow was just, was just running at full pelt directly into an opposition. I don't know if there was much uh, prior opportunity there. So Murphy's kick inside 50. Oh, 360 tackle and the umpire will throw the ball up. Already with plenty of bandaging is Fraser Rossman. He hasn't had a great start to the game, has he? Right. Rossman, but there's plenty plenty of time to turn that around. Absolutely is. The whistle's come in, and this is going to be a free kick to Port Melbourne. Machetti, it's called by the trailing umpire. Go wider, Highmore. Starting to influence this contest. Milady. Go back to Highmore. They're wanting to switch out of defence to try and find space to get that possession. They're just having to take time to do it, which makes it harder and harder to break through that press. And Laddie this time will go up the line. Flockhart's at the back. He eventually ended up with the footy, and he kicks a good one. Here's Archie Manton. His birthday today, isn't it, Gemma? 23 today for Archie Manton. Well, just told to get on with it now. And he'll just go with a high, deep ball inside 50. They fly. No one could take the mark. Caught at the bottom there was Josh Smith for the Dolphins. It eventually spills free. Testing times now. They've got an opportunity. The Borough, can they make the most of it? No, it's going to be turned over. Chance for the Dolphins to clear to that grandstand side. It's Highmore leading in the race, twisting, turning, needs some support, gets plenty of it. And Watson this time puts up a high kick. Good luck marking that one. As it heads towards the line, and we will have it tossed in. A far better. We haven't seen the result on the scoreboard yet, but a far better quarter so far from Port Melbourne. They're not stuck in their back half, and they found ways to exit it pretty consistently. But the next stage of that is actually getting that scoreboard impact. So it's again a clearance going the way of the Dolphins. And they've pretty much been controlling it from the right contests in this opening half as Rossman's tackled over the line and we'll have it tossed in. Yeah, Flockhart I think has been quite good. I think it's the mids that haven't necessarily positioned themselves the way that he needs um, at this stage. Obviously Sam Naismith was the number one ruck for Port Melbourne last year, got picked up by Richmond and has been included in... Richmond side for the AFL against his old team potentially on Sunday but it's just finding that connection between Ruck and Mids that is lacking a little bit at the moment for Port Melbourne. So the clearance now. Hooper, oh, he coughed up the footy. His boss goes over the top. Little short chipping ball and finds Johnson. It's just an onslaught at the moment from the Dolphins. It is. The Dolphins are so proactive and aware of what's happening around them that any small error from Port Melbourne they try to really capitalise on 
the only area that they haven't capitalised is, is in terms of their conversion at goal. Um, but other than that, the Dolphins are seriously a force. So, Matt Johnson. And plenty of shots at goal already. This time he makes no mistake. First of the afternoon. The Dolphins just putting him in a breathing space between them and their opponents as we work our way through this second quarter here at ETU Stadium. Just a beautiful set shot kick, isn't it? In a, in a team that has struggled for that conversion, as we've said, to be the one that can go back from a distance, take a really calm, neat set shot at goal and convert. It can be such a momentum changer as well, can't it? It can change the fortunes of your team when everyone else is going for goal. Well, it's reward for effort too. I mean, they've, they've had so much of the footy. Absolutely. And don't forget, you can get behind your favourite VFL and VFLW teams in 2024. Signing up as a member, particularly these two clubs, head to the VFL website for all of the club membership details. This ball's locked up in the middle of the ground. So it's about, for Paul Melbourne, getting a little bit more control around stoppage here, not allowing Frankston that constant entry into attack. The inside 50 count is 11, Port Melbourne 24 to Frankston. Off a step, Laddie kicks up towards centre-half forward. Can they get something going now? Outside of the boot job from Archie Manton. But it just goes across the ground here. Look at that from him, the igniter. Look at that burst of speed. He can do no wrong in your eyes, can he? Nope. <laughs> came back from a long-term injury. Did his knee, came back. Now involved in the coaching setup here at the borough. He does wear the best number. Joey and I had this discussion last week. Number 19 is the best number to wear. As if I'm sort of auditioning to be a part of the podcast with the discussion topics so far in this game as Hoford back out Gowers on the left towards the top of the goal square. Cigarello was at the back. He paddled it beautifully. Oh, good team effort. That's great. Machete finishes it off. First and second efforts just to impact that contest. And that could be a real team lifter for Port Melbourne. It's a seriously good goal. The connection between the teammates there was what created that, essentially. The kick inside from Gowers was to a really dangerous spot. You know, constantly it's called the hot spot, the top of the goal square, because anything could happen once it hits the deck there. But the awareness of Signorello to tap it on rather than take possession in the air, if he'd taken possession in the air, probably ends up as another stoppage because you'll get wrapped up really quickly. Instead, tap it on, create the opportunity for your teammate. And yeah, you talk about the igniter constantly. Is that the igniting moment rather than the igniting person? <laughs> well, he's on the ground, so it does count. <laughs> now, potential for a smithy snag, that one. But yet to have a multiple goal scorer as well, which is a bit of fun. Who will it be today? Your man? To start it off. Oh, look, I'm not going to write it off right now. Um, works into the middle of the ground. They might just have a little bit of that run. Hooper. This ball chopped off. Marotta managed to get it away. Owens. The kick wide, not hitting its target. Leading in the race for this is Highmore. Oh, it stayed in. It was right near that line. I think Highmore was a little bit surprised. Johnson, good awareness as well. And we'll have it tossed in eventually. It was well done by Johnson to not get him high, get Highmore high there because it could have been a dangerous situation there. We've seen a lot of head injuries being the big talking point and obviously at this level now it's a 21 day um, concussion layoff instead of 12 at the senior level so good work from him there to not cop him in the head. Push out so it's a free kick. Hoford to take it for Port Melbourne. goes up the line. Plenty of one-on-one -on -one contests here. Williams for the Dolphins was flying, but the umpire's seen something at the back, and it's going to Smith. Oh, this ball's been chopped off, though. Dangerous. Now they've got to run inside 50. Singarello, he spins around, gets around one tackle. He has a shot. It's not going to be a goal. He just snuck it in for a behind. I'm not sure whether he had another couple of steps in him there just to straighten up. How did he break that tackle to begin with? 
with ease as it turned out in the end. But it's good to see them taking a few more risks. We talked in that first quarter how they seem too risk adverse, trying to be protective, and it just wasn't working for them. At least now they're playing a bit more attacking. It's easier to do that when you're doing it in your front half and not in your defensive half, obviously. But it has created a spark in this game. Great to Murphy. Almost a fly. It is going to be paid to Highmore. There certainly has been a change in, in the momentum. It's not necessarily directly impacting the scoreboard. Here's the igniter, Anastasio. Look at him go from 49. He goes with a high kick all the way to the goal square off hands. I have seen him kick one from that position before many times at this ground. He was building up to it. Pete, at the other game that's happening right now, Williamstown's only ahead by four points at halftime against Coburg, who obviously struggled a bit last season. So good to see that one is a close one at the moment out at Highgate Recreation Reserve. Do you reckon it's going to be windy out there? I'm saying yes. There's the ball with Rankin. That's almost a high tackle. And the umpire's seen it. Yeah, I was just got a little bit too high there. There's a Frank's a player down. Back play, Gemma. I think it's Nunes. He might have copped one. Just a bit winded, I think. Here's Vickers. Carl Vickers. High ball. Inside 50, a crumbing player is Gowers, breaks a tackle, goes around the body, and this is going to be stopped again. Dolphins with plenty of numbers on the goal line, and here's Voss who's got it. Yeah, Nunes is fine, just FYI. Yeah, this is going to go close to the boundary line, it's drifted over, it's out of bounds on the full, took off with the breeze, and Rossman to bring the footy back into play. he going to do? He's just going to put it deep inside 50 and hope that someone could take a mark. Hoford was the tall target. He flew across the pack and the Dolphins to release. Owens ball touched and will have it thrown in. It was a great smother from the borough there. So now they're applying that forward press on Frankston that they were suffering from essentially in the first quarter. So it's really good that they've been able to switch that up Throwing back in. Tough for the boundary on on this side because the wind is making it tough to get any sort of distance. A little clever one from Hooper just inside 50. And I think that's gone for a holding free kick it is. And just settling things down. You can see George Gray just wanting to do just that. Let's just slow it down. Let's just have some control. Here's my knots. It is risky to sit on this boundary given the way the wind is pulling the ball over so you need to really pinpoint with your kicking so you don't float it out on the full is Butland did just that right in front of our commentary position at ETU Stadium high kick off hands whistle which way is this free kick going it's going to be a Port Melbourne free kick high more to take it Really influencing the contest this afternoon. Does his captain no favours, but look at that punch to Billy Gowers. He could take a bounce. He could almost take another one. Runs his measure. Long ball inside 50. Cirello had to wait an eternity for that football. He was trying to plead a case for some front on contact, but instead the ball is over the line. We'll have it tossed in. The work rate from Vic is there. He was up part of that contest in the defensive 50. And as soon as the ball was won, he got on his bike to become a small forward option deep in attack. If that ball had to come to ground at front rather than behind, he would have been all over that. Quickly, we're trying to find something is Curry. Here he is again. The igniter. Kick was smothered. To back to Gahan. They're just being pushed back. And now Curry will send Port Melbourne back inside 50. It hangs in the breeze. Marauder is there. He's held up by a couple. And the umpire will come in and intervene. As Angus Curry just a little worse for wear. He's okay, though. A lot more physical this quarter, I would say, compared to the last. Into the side for today's game. Quick out of the pack from the skipper. 
And that's a fortuitous goal. Harvey Hooper with his first on the board. Quick thinking and good hands. And this margin has been reduced. He's picking up from last week, Hooper. He had 30 touches, 6 tackles and 8 clearances. That's a massive, massive performance. And now this week he's kicked a goal that's put them back within one kick. Pretty handy leader to have at your club. Absolutely. And one of those uh, state squad members, Tom Highmore or another, doing some good work this afternoon. As is George Gray moving from the Casey Demons over here to Frankston. Gee, the drive to Casey is pretty far, but Frankston's further, right? Yep. Must have some Ks on his car. You're uh, sort of around the area. It's not so bad. It's true. As a as a big AFLW person, we do plenty of driving down there. Oh, yeah. The, uh, Casey Grant, Casey Fields, looking magnificent this season. It is this a beautiful kick. ground. He's going to be turned over. Watson's got it. Oh, picked up here by Rankin. Now Anastasio's got two to beat. Almost impossible. So he's going to have to do some chasing. Owens dragged down in the tackle, going nowhere. And the umpire will toss it up. I think uh, Angus Curry there just saying to the umpire, how long do they have there for opportunity? Well defended by Port Melbourne, who were outnumbered there, to just close the space really quickly. Owens again, just trying to tap it forward, not take possession himself. This will go right to the line. Smith doing well to keep it in. A little around the body up. The big fella, Flockhart, put it out to Rankin, who goes across the ground. Need a mark, get a mark. That's strong. Barnes had the front position. Now they can get something going. Rossman. A big high ball. The fists are going to come in. It's heading towards the boundary line. Curry's going to be first to the race here for Port Melbourne. Walker. Smith juggling. That's Rourke Smith. Hooper. Good user of the footy. Not on this occasion. Nana's got it. And he sends the Dolphins to the grandstand side. They go from one end of the ground to the other. Big ball. Oh, good mark. Johnson. That was cleverly done with his hands. He got that space and was able to take a fine mark. This is the thing that Frankston know that they're very good at. And I've said it a few times. I'm sorry to repeat myself, but the slingshot out of defense, they know that if they go quickly on the open side, they're actually going to expose the Port Melbourne defense. As soon as they won that in that turnover in the back half, it was go, 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 and look at the opportunity they've created. So, Johnson... Ish run up, 47 out, and well, they've had plenty of scoring opportunities. This that was their 13th, 13 to seven. Just the margin is just a goal. Yeah. Sorry to take your moment from you, Pete. That's okay. There'll be plenty more as uh, the afternoon goes along. I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> this ball, he's going to send them straight back in again. Right near the boundary line. Oh, need to be careful. He falconed himself in the end, did Riley. Plenty of numbers, though, for the bar up. That's not the best of options for Watson. What's the umpire going to say here? Throw it in. Ooh, lucky there. It was just a skill error, it, but it, we've seen those paid in different ways in other levels. Right in front of the... Social room, the function room here at ETU Stadium. Flockhart's down to Hooper, dispossessed. Great work again from the Dolphins. Milne, short kick. Doesn't find the target. It's right to the pocket. Paddling it in front of him is Baker Smith. And the umpire will toss it in right near the behind post. Pete, something we've seen change to allow Port Melbourne to get back into this game as well is they've solidified around the contest. They haven't allowed that really quick, powerful clearance into attack for the Dolphins. The Dolphins kind of have to work the ball around a little bit more when they do win the clearance. Well, he's got one opportunity here. Nana, his kick was partially smothered. Rankin just shooting the handball out and hoping really in the end it falls to Baker Smith. 
He goes with a long one outside, 50. It might come straight back in for the Dolphins. As they work to the back, handball out by Stanthorpe. Was partially smothered. It's hard and tough stuff. No one could really get clear. Can they get some run going this time, the Borough? They can, Rankin. And we'll get some good relief here. Milady has got a player running alongside. Now the kick up towards the middle of the ground. And it finds Barnes. Shorts to the player he received it from in Watson. He goes short as well. Is that going to be paid as 15? It is. And Hooper will give it to Barnes again. Long ball. Couple spoil each other. Ball off hands. Milne there for the Dolphins. Flockhart will go around the body. High ball right to the line. And cleverly done by O'Leary. The last line of defence. Goes with a short ball. George Gray. Along outside the 50, there's a holding free kick, which will go the way of Frankston's Nick Burke. Paul, Melbourne have created a lot more opportunities, obviously, this quarter to go inside 50. They're just not necessarily being super smart with the way they go in. They're a little bit rushed, maybe. They could be picking out some of those leading options because there is space in their forward 50 to draw out a little bit of a better leading target rather than just sitting it on the head of a pack. Great to Milne. Got the overlap run going. In the middle of the ground, Riley goes with a long handball sort of style. They get inside 50, and that's Butland. And we know he can get the trip. Hit the goal in the opening quarter. For all the graph that the Port Melbourne have shown in this second quarter, the Dolphins still hold the lead. Chance to extend it here. And they still can turn the game very, very quickly. Head towards half time. From 53 metres out. Look at that! How good! Butland with his seconds. And absolutely no trouble with the trip there. And so they've worked hard to get back into the contest, Port Melbourne, but Frankston are going to hold a handy lead heading into half time. It's always that conversation of how quickly a team can hurt you and that's something Frankston has done really well today is they might feel it might feel like they're on the back foot a little bit but as soon as they're able to get it out and that quick transition is kind of the key phrase for them quick transition they hit up that target inside 50 and it's making life really hard for those Port Melbourne defenders so now it's about accuracy they kick the four goals 10 if they can just keep it up and and swing that accuracy a little bit their way, they'll be very, very hard to beat. So back in the middle. So into the ruck now for Port Melbourne. Going to work against Angus Grant. It'll be the Dolphins again going inside 50. Big pack of uh, Port Melbourne players. Plenty of opportunity for Matt Johnson to pick up that footy and go with it. He was tackled. The umpire said, well, we're going to throw it up. Have they got time for one more before half-time? Absolutely, they do. Grants. Ooh. Again, just held up. Stoppage after stoppage. There's Curry at the bottom of that pack. Hofford running, bumping, jumping. Trailing umpire is going to call a free kick here. It's going to go the way of the Dolphins. Looks like it's going to go to the skipper, Trent Minitz. Again, that was called from the non-officiating umpire in back play. Seen something, and Minitz will take the free kick. Well, Port Melbourne have gone to work on slowing that Frankston midfield down. Maybe there's a little bit of without the ball holding happening in an effort to do so. The margin, three goals at half time. He kicks a good one. And they get around him as well as you should for your skipper. Leading all comers as we get this third quarter underway. And Murphy will send the Dolphins forwards. Good kick, Marotta. Was worried off it by Highmore. He will take the free kick though. Over the shoulder. All right to pick up the footy. 
He's got a player across the ground in Moran. That's Can get clean possession here. Nunes trying to get involved, and the umpire will toss it up. But again, this is where it gets dangerous for Port Melbourne, isn't it, when they get trapped in this position? Just slapped down by Grant for Frankston. And just heart stopping moments here for the borough as Hurd's trying to clear the area. Hooper. Go around his body, just trying to go for distance more than anything else. Overrunning it is Billy Gowers. And the Dolphins with another opportunity if they can get clean possession. But well done by Barnes, just sending that ball forward, hacking it forward. All for Dolphins though, they fall of the ball. And O'Leary, good in the first half to Reedy. In fact, it's not Reedy, it's Barlow. So, Team Barlow. Balls to take a little bit more time. As Gemma mentioned, the Borough have just stopped that run of Port Melbourne that we saw in the opening quarter, and Baker Smith takes a defensive mark. Yeah, when they were not getting that repeated slingshot out of the back half. Port Melbourne have created a layered defence rather than just putting it all on their back six. Flockhart had front position, couldn't take the mark. Nunes gets through the traffic. O'Leary. Thought about going by hand. Held it nicely for Quirk. He's trying to get through the traffic. Reedy sold his teammates in Minot did all sorts of trouble. Not good practice when that's your captain. And we'll have it tossed in. Franken wanted a below-the-knees free kick there that was never coming his way. But again, stopping it higher up the field. It's not allowing that, that inside 50 for Frankson where they can get really dangerous. Yes, this will... Be a repeat stoppage. Well, the other thing too, which we've talked about, we've talked about that dominance that they've had in the ruck, Port Melbourne. But in that opening quarter, it was Frankston getting on the end of them, so they were having the takeaway, and that's been neutralised a little bit as well. Yeah, they just they seem to be on the move more around those stoppages. So Miller doing the ruck work for Port Melbourne, but down to Quirk, who might have been legged. Yep. But again, there's these defensive efforts to stop because he's on his own. Uh, Quirk was the spare for Frankson at the stoppage there. By all rights, he should have just been able to move away with that, but he was slowed up. Ball falls to the side. Reedy, handball across. Murphy just running out of room. Back to Reedy. He dropped that footy. That was pretty obvious. And the umpire was right there. As Rosman, who's... Lost the bandaging now. Oh, no, he's got a little bit of it still. Well, it was slightly reduced. Rankin, leading disposal winner on the ground to half time. Here's Hurd. Goes wider to Smith. It's Baker Smith. And trying to get something going. Watson, a player running alongside. This ball into a good position. If Cigarello could have picked it up, it came off his ankles. Now he's forced to lay the tackle and just stop that contest. Your man was on his bike. He was. I wasn't going to mention that. I just had a little bit more of extra excitement. So this ball quickly going into the pocket. And the boundary line should win out here. It was just Miller grabbing it and hurling it onto the boot. I don't mind that from Miller, though. You know that you're in 70 metres of goal and you've got a couple of small forwards who can really do some damage. Gain that ground, give them a chance. Miller just couldn't get to it that time. Murphy. Uh, that's a crude tackle. So Quirk will cop another one. He's got a couple of one in these, these third quarters. As uh, Gray will go with a long ball up towards half forward. It's quite vacant down there. And the ball in the hands of Highmore. So Tom Highmore. To get things going. Again the turnover. Gray. Right place, right time if you're a Frankston supporter. His kick wide, big jump. No mark taken. Anastasio there. Frankston player in that contest. Just looking a little worse for wear. Walker's kick into the middle of the ground. Barnes 
They can get some overlap run going. Here's Anastasio. Gets the handball over the top to Flockhart, who just waits. Curry was running alongside. This long kick up towards the top of the goal square. The big fist coming in from Owens. And this will be a throw in off the behind post. Matt Johnson fell really hard when he flew for that ball in Frankston's forward half earlier. He's only just gotten up off the ground now. I think it's a hip. He landed very hard on his left side. So it's taken him some time to get up and about. But he's moving relatively freely now to try and get back up to be part of this. Well, that ball's dropping well short from the boundary umpire with the breeze. Well, Murphy, he tried to take it on. His kick was smothered. He goes to the line. Pete, you enjoyed some halftime entertainment? My word, I did. What were they called? The Green Chilies. The Green Chilies from Middle Park Primary. Well done. Eight, a band of eight kids that have been playing almost all day now. They were bashing out the classics. Don't you worry about that. The crowd was enjoying it too. They've had a big day because they were here for the Rebel VFLW game. Here's Anastasio trying to drag himself through. He's taken two of them on. Yes, they were playing the classics and then throwing in a random Dua Lipa song. I loved it. Uh, the crowd was enjoying it. Well done to them. Yeah, unreal. In all of the breaks they were performing. And I think they're done now. I think they ran out of songs. Yeah, they played a fair few though. They sure did. So now a chance for the Borough. I'm trying to get it through as Machete. Couldn't do so. They clear again. Voss. Long ball. Let's push out here from Williams. In fact, it's not Williams. It's Nunes who goes over the top. Player an acre of space is Johnson. Steadies. Long ball. He's decided to go the trip here. It's been kept in nicely. Well done, Butland. Find some space. Kicks the goal. Well controlled. And Butland has his third of the afternoon. And this is a big margin in the context of the game for Frankston. It's the worrying sign for Port Melbourne because that was the sort of transition that they'd been able to slow down in that second quarter but for Frankston to be able to go end to end like that in such a it was almost e too easy for them really the most pressure they came under was Butland on the goal line there but really good to see Johnson involved in that after that heavy fall he is still like a little bit proppy but he's still able to have a big impact on this game the other game going on at the moment, they're into the final quarter. It's 88.56, Williamstown leading Coburg, 68.44 at Highgate Recreation Reserve this afternoon. Hoford had to wait for that footy to come to him. Hooper putting in the fist for Port Melbourne and then being slapped on again, just trying to get something going. Barnes was just leading in that race. Lost the handle on it, Hoford. Through hands we go. Now a chance for Walker to try and drag that footy back. Can't do so. Bit of frust frustration has crept into the Port Melbourne attacking half at times during this game. Frustrated with teammates for taking the shot instead of passing it off. So just finding that team connection I think is really important for the Borough. So this ball has gone in short. Quirk. Oh, what a kick. It's an interesting kick. Walker's leading in the race for it. It's a two-on-one in favour of the Dolphins if they can keep the ball in. Walker pretty happy to see that ball out. I don't hate that kick, though, Pete, because if they, they had an outnumber there, it was just well done by the Borough to actually close that down by Campbell Walker. If that had come off, though, they had acres of space on this broadcast side to run through, which we know they really want to do. So it wasn't that risky because they get a stoppage. They've been strong at stoppage. Hey up as the kick up towards half forward falls to the back. Gown just had to release the footy. Hooper throws it onto the boot. Wasn't really looking, and Gray has taken the mark. The former Casey Demon. Goats on with it. Long ball, Gown. It's quickly taken out of the pack, around the body. It's another one. They're calling for touch near that contest, and the umpire says no, and it'll be another one. Butland's got his fourth. The Port players, well, they were, were thinking that that ball was touched off the boot. Not the case, and 
Butlin has number four. There's no score review in this, so there's no point even attempting it, really, is there? But the that's the thing about Franks, and we, we talked a lot about all they need is some of that accuracy to just fall their way just a little bit, and we've seen that happen. Though at one point they were three ten. They've now kicked four goals straight, and they've really extended that lead to 29 points. So all they need is a little bit of that, that luck to fall their way, tiny bit of skill to fall their way, and they're right on top. Oh, plenty of chat about this game and all the games in the Smithies VFL and Rebel VFLW on the official podcast, the 2024 season, the state of play. Get it wherever you get your podcast from. Gemma doing a fantastic job. Joey, work to do as the ball here <laughs> back in the middle. Rankin trying to lay the tackle. Second and third efforts were good, but the ball is eventually released. Leading in the race here is O'Leary, just trying to trap it in front of him. Did a good job in the end, being corralled by Milady. Hooper, Milady again, works it to Gowers, into the middle of the ground. Hoford, the point player, and a long ball again from Gowers. High, falls to the back. Who's going to be the crumbing player? Flockhart, that was interesting. And now it's off hands. They should get some reward for everybody. They can't. They're just one handball too many. And in the end, Smith went wide. And they can get some run outside 50. Murphy's that carry player. Sold his teammate into all sorts of trouble. And the footy's been turned over. Heard wants to get onto it. Get on with it. But Rossman will be the player to take the free kick. I think. As I think we might have... We got a blood rule? I think we do. As yeah, we have got a blood rule. Just trying to pick up who the player is that's coming off. It looks like it's, it's going to be Murphy. It's uh, Vickers. Or Vickers. He's coming off with the trainer at the moment. Ah, uh, yes. So there we go. So eventually we'll restart play. So Rossman... They need the next one here, Port Melbourne. The high ball falls to the back. And that will be thrown in. That was exactly the moment where they needed someone like Vickers, their representation at ground level. I think he's okay. The ball's about to be tossed back in. Hofford just started in the front position, ended up at the back. Ball falls to ground. Malady. Well, that was nowhere near. They're just getting a little bit... Not lazy, but taking the easiest first option. And the shot at goal around the body from 50 out is not the best option, even if you're under pressure. Stainthorpe. Long ball outside the 50. Big pack of players around this contest. Rossman brought down. Good tackling pressure from Burke. Pete, O'Leary is a great one to watch play. He's got such control with the way he moves. He's got that lower centre of gravity. And this is him here with the footy. Getting the free kick as well. Yeah, got his head slammed into the ground. He reminds me a lot of Kieran Jack, who used to play for the Swans, obviously. That lower centre of gravity and that ability to change direction without having to telegraph it, it's a, it's a bit of a rugby technique. But the way he's able to move around the ground, it's very powerful, but really agile in that way. Um, it's been really impressive to watch. Burke, good mark, under pressure. It was a great kick too. As it goes long. Players flying in from the side. Good pressure here again by the borough. They're clinging on Rankin. It was a solid tackle on Gown, and he comes up with the free kick. Butland a little bit proppy after that knock as well. His right leg a bit sore. So his kick goes into the middle of the ground, and it's going to come straight back in Milne. Running out of room. So that high up and under. It's a two on one in favour of Port Melbourne. And it's Rourke Smith. Goes to his skipper in Hooper. That's going to be 50 metres. <laughs> Nana was over the, the mark and the umpire red hot on it. Someone in the boundary calling for 100, which 
Not going to happen. Hooper's just going to have a shot, though. Long ball from 50. There's your team lifter. His second of the afternoon. Taking advantage of the 50-metre penalty. Making absolutely no mistake. Didn't need the 100. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was sensational. That was brilliant. And it... It's about taking opportunities, right? You know that you've got the 50. You know you've got people trying to reorganize themselves in a defensive line. Why not make the most of that and have the ping when you know you've got the distance? Different to what I was saying before, a shot around the body from 50 out when you've got options, that's the right time to be taking a ping from 50. How many times do you reckon he's practiced that at training on this ground? Oh, 6,000. Plenty. Plenty for that particular... that situation his second goal of the afternoon and well, giving them a shot at it if they can keep the momentum going things can get very interesting as we work our way through this third quarter Hoferts the second efforts it's kicked to the one on one and it's just the Borough players leading the contest at this stage Archie Manton goes around the body and we'll have it tossed in. Rankin is still leading everyone with 23 disposals, but Hooper has come up. He's played a very important quarter so far with 21 touches to go with his two goals as well. Hoferts. Manton to lead in the race, but the boundary line will win out. I mentioned that Frankston... Their run, a little inconsistent, and not because of the way that they're playing. It's just that they've got two buys in a row. They've got the state game buy, and then a buy in round three. It's hard to cop that. You want to build momentum in your season, and that just stunts it, doesn't it? Yep, kick smothered here. Hard did well. Dolphins under all sorts of pressure. Heard laying that tackle. Working his way through the igniter. Finding some space. Goes with a long ball. There's going to be a whistle. Oh, he was... Now, is this going to be way through for a goal? So Gowers was... It's a goal. It's a goal. It's downfield. To your right, Jeff. Just take us through what happened there. Gowers was trying to protect his teammate in that shot. And it got absolutely pummeled as the ball was being kicked. And didn't look in a good way initially, but... Good that they're able to pay the goal rather than bring it back, take the advantage away from from Port Melbourne there. But you're right, in a way, aren't you? The nickname that you've got. Can that ignite something? Well, I'm hoping so. I mean, a little bit of gloss taken off that with what happened after the ball was released, to be fair. But is that the lifter? They've certainly got the opportunity... To pile on a couple more as we head towards time on. It's how the Dolphins will respond here because they have, as you've been talking about throughout this, this third quarter, been locked down, particularly at half forward. If they can get a clean clearance powerfully moving forward, they're dangerous here. And there is that move, if they could be clean. Hoford getting in the way, though. Brought down in the tackle. Released by Rourke Smith. Up towards half forward, and that is a strong mark. Tyson Milne playing a good game this afternoon for the Dolphins. He goes wide. Stainthorpe. Working on Flockhart. Into the middle of the ground. Murphy. Over the top. Gray. Just being corralled. He'll get that long kick away. Whistle. And that will be a free kick to the Dolphins from that contest. It was a really concerted choice from the Dolphins out of the ruck. The spike forward was clear in their intention to get that territory late in the quarter to get that dominance back. So it'll be Marotta to take it. He hasn't kicked a goal today. He's had a couple of shots. Just to halt the Port Melbourne momentum. Low ball, but effective. And against the run of play, the Dolphins respond. Good contest, this one. The end of time on in this third quarter. Takes it back out to a four-goal lead, which 
going into a final term, four goal lead is it feels very different to three goals, doesn't it, Pete? It sure does. I mean, just because of that that stop in momentum, just that they kept getting the run on here, Port Melbourne, they get to within two goals. You feel that they could build on that. Now they go back to the start again. Almost. By no means is it over, but mentally you have to be willing to challenge yourself to overcome something that even though it's one kick, it's still significant in the difference of that, that lead. So away we go again. Hooper, second to the race for Minot. The two just, skippers going at it, free kick. Hooper's just using his body as a an absolute cannonball through stoppage at the moment. It's He's effective. No regard for his own safety. He's just cannonballing into people. Rankin. Inside 50 they go. High ball falls to the back. One effort, second. Here you go. Flocker, the big fella, getting involved in the goals. Immediate response from the borough. Flockhart's been great today. He's copped a couple of knocks, so hasn't moved as freely as he would have liked. He's been strong in the hitouts, connection with the midfield still coming. But then to go forward, and he's had a presence. He, that's his first goal for the day. But he's had a presence all day in the air, trying to bring it to ground for those smalls. It's just starting to really hum for them, and he could be a massive, massive part of this last quarter for them. Could have a massive, massive finish coming up too. Melbourne beating Frankston. They met last year down at Kinetic Stadium in Frankston. It's a close result. This one looking similar. And this quarter's been going for over 30 minutes as well. Hooper, second, third efforts. Just ripped away for Angus Grant. He's now forced to lay the tackle on Hofford. He's opposite Ruckman. Let's see if we get the spike out of the ruck again. Here's Hooper. Kick was partially smothered. Good effort from Murphy and the follow-up. Here's an option, Riley. Going inside 50. Leading in the race for this is Watson. And the boundary line might win out. It does. We will have it tossed in. It's good recovery from Watson to get out the back there and trail that ball. Set themselves up. Hoford was just led to the footy. Minot around one. Couldn't get around the second. Still got the kick away though. It's going out of mid-air. Inventive. Gahan puts it into the middle of the ground. Not sure everyone was ready for that. But it's worked out for the Dolphins. Barlow over the top. Moran needs to be clean. This kick was touched. Owens was being held. We'll take the free kick. Gets on with it. Quirk. Breaks one tackle. Now the kick long inside 50. Butland coming in from the side. All right to the line. Nunes held his feet nicely. Got boot to ball. But just off target. And they were looking threatening there again. Did he think that he was in front of a different set of sticks there, Nunes? <laughs> but they, they do... They have, they're back to that really dangerous... You know, controlling territory, not allowing that exit. They're squeezing right up into their front half. Heard long kick. Hope at the front position. Flockhart at the back. Oh, it's a really good job just to trap that footy. Over the top. Here's the igniter. Go for a run. Get on your bike, son. Go. You need to take a bounce, though. You're going to run out of room. Be careful. He doesn't run too far. He kicks up the centre half forward. Now the ball here with Machete goes wide. Player in space, just forced off it. Milady, good body work. Well done again. O'Leary just going for territory. It's going over the line. This will be an interesting call. The umpire says throw it in. Smart. Just, just navigated that boundary line beautifully. It's a three-goal ball game here at ETU Stadium. A beautiful day for footy. Still 28 degrees. Breezy, as you can hear in the effects mics. Hoford with the front position. Over there to Murphy. Inside 50, they go plenty of holding, but the front position taken by Watson, and the mark is going to be paid. 
Works across Coglin. And this is going to be cut off Owens. Front position. Wants to go big. And he does just that. Top of the goal square. They fly from all directions. Marotta was the high flyer. Ball here, Butlins. Held up in the tackle. It's going absolutely nowhere. And the umpire will toss it up. Big moments now for Port Melbourne with Frankston in attack. Lots of hands on knees, some really tired bodies out there. Hoford, ball spills free. Minots, just up and under. It's not going to be 15, so Owens needs to get on with it. Actually dropped the footy in the end. That might be in the back, and I think the umpire has seen it. Yep. A few fans unhappy with that. It was there, though. Given we're in borough territory. I might just say that very softly, but I thought it was there. <laughs> so, Owens now. Demaya Owens with a chance. This has been the tricky pocket side of the ground has, to the yeah. Bob Bonnet end. They seem to be going real skinny on it, thinking that wind's going to bring it back, but it doesn't quite. Let's see if the adjustment's been made. Still breezy. Kick from 40. Going wide to the line. We'll have it through for a behind. Overdid it a little bit. Went the other way. Went the other way. Has been a very long quarter though, hasn't it, Pete? Uh, Quirk. It's gone over the top. Murphy. Hooper. As they go towards half forward. And Dolphins front position. Barlow takes the mark. Back they go. Voss, chipping ball, over the top for Gray. Slowing them here is good. And they haven't exited the 50. Stainthorpe, looking to get something going. You just go with the wide kick. And they've managed to populate higher up the field. So if it does get over the, the press, it isn't just a free reign. It isn't just space. O'Leary's got it. Short ball, Williams. So Williams will just go back. This is the first time we've seen the Dolphins really trapped in a back pocket, isn't it? And they're doing it well here, the Borough. But they need to win it back and hit the scoreboard before the end of the quarter. Absolutely. Marotta got hands to it, but Hurd kicking it back towards the 50. Play a little bit of kick to kick at the moment. That mark's going to be paid to O'Leary. At half back, on the grandstand side. That's a good fist coming in from Gowers. Just good awareness of the situation. And right near the Frankston race, we'll have the ball tossed in. It's now or never for the Borough, isn't it? They, they need to make something of this to give them that momentum going into the last quarter. Absolutely. Flockhart had it all to himself. Fumbled at the crucial moment, still managed to tap it down to Gowers. He goes around the body. Igniter just caught out of position. The clearing ball from Barlow. This is a wide open space that Nunes is running into. He gets there. Corral by Watson. In one way, then the other. Nicely done. Good experience. The kick up to centre half forward. Not his greatest. Highmore is there. He's got some teammates in space. One of them's Rankin. Although the kick not finding the target again. And Minot takes the mark. Kick to centre half forward. He's going to get it back again. Let's see what he does this time. He's going to get 50 metres. Red hot on that. We saw what Harpy Hooper could do with his 50 from that position. The same spot, yeah. Lockie Rankin. He's taking a bit more time though. He's going to try and find someone. He's going to go long. Oh, he's going to go in board. Gets around the player on the mark. Long kick. Great goal. And they've done it again from the 50-metre penalty. And that, Gemma, might give them the momentum heading to three-quarter time. Absolutely. Not just the fact that he's kicked it, but he wait, the way he kicked that. It's almost like he said, all right, the rest of you are going to come on my back here, and now we're going to run with it. The fact that it's Rankin and Hooper, they're two best players today so far, who have been kicked significant momentum-shifting goals. Everyone needs to kind of rise to their level now. Well, that's a Smithy snag. One of the goals of the day. And it's 13 points, the margin. 
Just want to shout out as well, Toby Watson's effort to defend Nunes. I know Nunes got the ball away, but Watson did enough to hold him up long enough that a teammate was able to come in and pressure the kick, which created the turnover, which then created the free kick. Don't have to touch the ball to have a big impact. Grant working with Hoford. It's the takeaway for Rourke Smith. Here's Anastasio just bounced over his head. Unfortunate. Working there, Owens. And that's going to be brought down. No call from the umpire. They come piling in. This will be a neutral contest. The Borough faithful. They're up and about now. They can sense something. Definitely they can. Rankin just sitting off the back of this stoppage here as well. Hooper being so influential in this third quarter. Rankin going absolutely nowhere. Great tackle from Burke. They'll be thrown up right in front of our commentary position here at ETU Stadium. So Rankin just goes and sits as the spare behind it, almost as a sweeper of the stoppage. As Gals was taken high. Rankin just telling him, settle down. Gals going, nah, I'm going to get on with it. And turn over the footy. Voss takes the mark. Immediately looking to switch to the open side. And he runs into trouble because Anastasio was there and aware the ball has to go back to Milne. Caught in that back pocket. On the function room side of the ground. This ball falls fortuitously to Watson. Now inside 50 they go. Need a mark. Not going to get one. Cingarello having to do the heavy lifting there for the Borough. Instead, it's cleared, and this ball onto the boot from Stainthorpe. Goes into the middle of the ground. I think it's going to come straight back. It's going to be a free kick. Coglin's going to take it. And he goes across towards the grandstand side. Hurd works it to Smith. That's Baker Smith. A high ball. There's going to be another free kick going the way off Port Melbourne. Rankin's got it. Short, oh, dangerous, off hands. Johnson, just a long ball. And looking up here, Nunes doesn't see anything ahead. He has to take his time. And it's not necessarily going to be the best option because they're under pressure. That is a solid mark. Nicely done by Reedy. They're just holding the footy, waiting for some players to get inside 50. They do now. Roddick was caught at the back. Watson now forced to lay the tackle. Ball eventually spills free, and the umpire will call a stop. Earlier on in the game when Frankston felt very confident, they wouldn't have taken that long kick inside. They would have come across to open up that those angles going inside 50 before going in. So we've seen the, the result of that confident shift that Port Melbourne has forced. Ball off hands. This will be an important one for the Dolphins. No. Off targets. So now we are ticking towards three-quarter time. Four goals for the Borough in this quarter. Three goals for Frankston. And Rossman will go as far as he possibly can. Juggling mark almost to Miller. They've still got the numbers. Ball up towards center wing. Now they can get a move through the middle. Long ball. Barnes will go high. The ball bouncing. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. Cigarello had some space. But the siren gets in the way, and that is three-quarter time here at ETU Stadium. 8-13-61, Frankston, 7-5-47, Port Melbourne. Four goals with 21 leading the way. Here we go in the final quarter here at ETU Stadium. It's been a great day for football. There's Burra through Anastasio, inside 50, Singarello. Just trying to break the tackle. Can't do so. Good work from Smith. And the umpire says that was very close to the boundary line and goes over. Vickers now got head taping to match Rosman after having to go off with the blood rule late in that last quarter as well. This ball dropping short. Meant that Miller couldn't really get a good run at it. Hooper goes around the body. Dangerous ball, but Barlow is there for the Dolphins to Quirk, and that disappears outside the field of play. So this has been the end that teams have been able to dominate territory in, so this is a positive for Port Melbourne coming into the, this last quarter. They're only 14 points down. 
So, Hooper. High ball. Need a mark. The fist coming in there from Grant. They should be able to clear. Voss goes with a long ball. Clean balls. Everyone really in the end. Gown to lead in the race. He's worried off the footy. Smith working hard. That's Baker Smith. There's Coglin down at the bottom of the pack. The umpire intervenes. They really need the first, though, Gemma. You feel Port Melbourne in this last quarter. Absolutely, they do. They need to continue the momentum that they brought into that last break. If they give that up early, it might just be a mental challenge too far. So, with the tall and the short of it there, Angus Grant getting the free kick off Anastasio. And his kick going long. High gown caught at the back. Butland is there with Rankin. And this ball is over the line. We will have it tossed in. Someone... A dolphin is hurt, being looked at by the physio and being taken from the ground as well. It is Matt Johnson. Matt Johnson. Yep. He's, he's the one who's been battling a bit of a hip hip soreness after that heavy fall earlier as well. Oh, he's got to be careful here, Rossman. He's caught. He's in trouble. He's holding the footy. It'll be a Frankston free kick. Not sure he could have done much to get rid of the footy because it was right underneath him, but. In the end, the skipper's got it for the Dolphins. Chance at his second of the afternoon. An important one in this final quarter. And he's been strong today. This would be a chance for him to really just lift his team as well while they've been on the back foot. So this would really stop the momentum of Port Melbourne. They've just been able to hold them. This Frankston team to around this margin. Might not... Very deliberate approach, taking his full allotment of time. And the kick is narrow. The other thing we're seeing more from the Port Melbourne defence, because of that uh, pressure that's being applied higher up the ground, they've been able to force more difficult shots on goal for the Dolphins. So the shots aren't coming from really handy marks directly in front of goal. They're coming from further out. They're challenging Frankston. Well, if you're going to take a shot on goal, we're going to make it as difficult as possible for you. Rossman. Let's kick into the path here of Gahan, who's got a bit of work to do. Will he keep it in? No. Now, this is a stoppage that Port Melbourne needs to get a hold of very quickly. Because if Frankston is able to get that powerful forward entry from this, they could be incredibly dangerous off the back of it. It's Miller with the front position, and it's going to be a Frankston free kick and advantage. Around the body goes Burke, top of the goal square, juggling. No mark taken, Smith did well. Although this may only be temporary relief, it is. Owens takes it, outside 50. Going to take a little bit of extra time. And now the kick towards the pocket, over the back. Here is the igniter in the back pocket. Trying to get a kick. Owens just caught underneath it. Good contest. We'll have it tossed in. But again, the worry, I feel like a broken record, but the worry is when Port Melbourne gets stuck in their back pocket and they just can't find that extra possession outside of defensive 50 because then Frankston builds and builds and builds and builds the pressure and eventually break through. And as you said, Port Melbourne really needs to get the first goal. Well, it may not be for them. That's a beautiful kick. Nader has kicked it. He's first of the afternoon. And that was beautifully done. That came off the back of that persistent pressure, though, didn't it? It caused the stoppage, which we know that in large patches of the game, the Dolphins have had really, really strong presence around the ball. And then to just sneak out into that pocket, get a little bit of space and the composure to convert, it's an impressive goal. And every time the Borough have tried to build some momentum, there's just been that choice moment where that goal comes in. And they've done it well. They have. And so here, this is where we see what the Borough are made of. Because in previous 
centre stoppages after goals, the um, Frankston have been able to win back dominance again here and move the ball forward. It's important that the Borough find what they had in that last quarter. They've sent Billy Gowers into the middle here. They want that physical presence. They need to break even or win this. After the take two, though. Yes. <laughs> So, let's try that again. That's a big one there from Grant. The fist coming in. It's good game awareness from Grant, isn't it? The, the fact that he knows it's a very important moment for momentum swinging. So, to spike the ball out, that's what a really good ruck can do. There's Barnes. Wide turnover. It's Barlow taking the mark. Into the middle of the ground. Oh, Miller came from over the top. Not a good option. Here's Milne. Long ball, high ball. Marotta's there. Nunes is there. Nunes kicks the goal. And you feel that's going to break Port Melbourne Hearts. He's first. And exactly what you're talking about. It was all about momentum wasn't it and it's the choices that you make when you've got momentum because you're confident as compared to when you don't it's the willingness to take that kick into the middle that didn't quite work because his teammate came too high misread it but it's the presence around because you are skiing on a downhill slope isn't it when everything's going right everything goes right because you're taking more chances you're more confident in the way you use the ball therefore you're more often than not going to hit it because you're not tentative in the way you use it. That's what's happening for Frankson now. That's what was missing a little bit in that last quarter there. But now it's back. That kick back into the corridor. Shortest avenue to goal, and they're so dangerous. Hoford into the ruck. He copped one there in the ruck contest and will take the free kick. Well, the response needs to be immediate. Hooper's trying to provide that. Long kick, you see two on one, three on one, and still fell into the hands there of Manton. He's dragged down the tackle, didn't have much support up there. This ball into open space, now Riley to get onto it, brought down in the tackle, it's near the line, and we will have it tossed in. Pete, if I'm Jackson Conberg, I'm really proud of the way my team has started strong but then been challenged and being able to stand up in the face of that because some teams and I'm sorry to bring this up but your Lions at AFL level when it gets really tough they haven't been able to stop the flow but I think Frankston have really done that really uh, really hoping you wouldn't have brought that up but uh, okay I did apologise <laughs> that makes it slightly better <laughs> they just happen to be the example uh, it was a good one and a fair one as Nana lost a handle on the footy. It's coming straight back in again. Singarello just well, caught at the front this time. It's into the path of Grants. And this again is to the boundary line and Walker will see it over. If the Borough are any shot at reigning in this lead, they need to create a scoring opportunity from this. Well, let's see what they can do. But trying to extract it. Ball going absolutely nowhere. Hofer just staying down this time on Grant. And another stoppage. And the other thing too, I mean, obviously Port Melbourne playing last week up at Southport. Warm conditions up there. That has any effect... And seven Southport days later. Are quite physical in the way they play as well, so bodies just getting used to it. Here's Gowers. This time they get the mark. Singarello wheels around, wastes no time, and kicks the goal. He's second of the afternoon. A good awareness of the situation. I think okay. the grand announcer has changed. It's a different voice from earlier. Well, it's fired up now. But we, we pointed out Gower, Gower, sorry, I've lost my ability to speak. Gower's going into the midfield. You know, physical presence, 
aware, experienced linking player. That kick inside 50 was brilliant to Signorello as well. So putting your best players in their best positions when the going gets tough does, is, is a tried and true method, isn't it? Absolutely. Two goals to one, though, in this quarter in favour of Frankston. Just, again, just makes that centre bounce so, so crucial. As you've been talking about all game, Gemma. We'll see if we get the spike again. So Grant, Hoford. What's going on here? 6-6-6 for Port Melbourne. Ball will be thrown up. I haven't, I haven't seen one of them for a while. No. At least not in the VFL. No. There's... Hooper just trying to make a nuisance of himself in there, but it's been turned oh. over. Nicely done. Reedy will have a shot. All the way the line gets there. There was a bit of holding going on, but that's the immediate response. Lachlan Reedy with his first of the afternoon. Show me that handball to Reedy out of the middle on repeat. That was... An unbelievable... I know handballs seem so insignificant, and you look at stats, and if a player's got more handballs than kicks, you judge their ability to actually do a lot with the footy. That's how dangerous you can be with a handball. That little knock over the top, it was perfect to Reedy, who didn't have to break stride, and then he could keep running on. It was over... The, I didn't catch who did it, but it was over the top of his head. While being tackled, it was incredible, that, that handball, and... Little possessions like that can completely change things for your team. It's now 27 points, the margin. Grant and Hoford. Hoford gets it down, but again, they're looking to get the clearance, the Dolphins. This time they're stopped. It was Murphy trying to work his way through. Hooper. Clears the area up towards half forward. Here's the igniter. Needs a goal right now. Twisting, turning, back forward. Got to do something. He goes across the ground. High ball. Miller got high. Couldn't complete the mark. Numbers here with Port Melbourne in the end. Hoford just goes with a handball. Malady brought down. Second time. That might be in the back. No, it's going to be holding the footy. Just lost his feet. So here is Reedy. Short kick. Murphy. Been good today, Thomas Murphy. And that's a good mark as well. Late pressure, but Riley was up for it. Awkward landing as well. Kick long. Plenty of numbers down here for the Dolphins. The bottom of that pack is Baker Smith for Port Melbourne. The umpire will throw the ball up. Hooper just landed with a hyper-extended leg there, which is never nice to see, but he's up and running. Oh, I need him. As Gahan might have taken one high. Can we get some free-flowing run? At the moment, Frankson doing a great job. Highmore. I haven't really seen him much in this second half, Tom Highmore. There's the kick. Goes up the line. Gowers. Oh, milady has got a bit of a task here. He's fallen again. Yeah, he has. Owens got him. Hoford just missed the target. Milady, and here is Murphy being corralled. Ball goes back. Not 15. Smith, nice smother. Oh, gee, working out there. Vickers was an interesting tackle. This is an interesting kick as well. Ball falls to ground. Miller, the long kick. Cigarello, he's not going to keep this in. It just took off on him. It was almost the perfect kick. It's the first time we've really seen as well Port Melbourne trying to actually spot up targets in space inside 50 rather than kicking to a pack. Hoford to the back. And that's good tackling pressure. They need to lock this footy in, Port Melbourne. Because it's very much Frankston with the momentum. They played so well today. Hoford 
worried off the footy by Grant that time. Hahn. Is there going to be a free kick? It is going Frankston's way. Reedy. Middle of the ground they go. Good overlap. Here's Riley. Long kick. Is this downfield? It will be. Play on. Nunes will seal it. It's down the ground. And a little bit of push and shove to it. R4. They dust themselves off. But Nunes has two final quarter goals. And this is going to be a good win for Frankston coming up. Absolutely. And seeing teammates getting to... Was it Murphy that got that kick off and got crunched? Seeing them get to him, recognising his impact on that, and he took a body blow for them to get that sealer, what we're saying is a sealer, with still a bit of time on the clock. Just really impressive with the way, how quickly they're able to react to things, really important. Specifically, they win a free kick, the awareness that they want to go fast, they want to take the advantage rather than stop, prop, and attempt to go again. We yeah, talk so a lot about team chemistry, and it feels like the Dolphins have that. Spot on, that positive positivity that just rolls through the team. Jackson Kornberg would be pretty happy with that. Marotta's into the ruck now for the Dolphins. Murphy shot out the handball again. Reedy into the forward pocket. Well, a couple of players falling over. This ball right to the line. Ooh. And Rossman, who's been in the wars today, taken over. Sensibly decided to give it to Rankin, the former Sydney Swan. Yes. Didn't play a game from memory. And it's gone out of bounds on the full. That kick aside, he's been fantastic today, Rankin. He's worked incredibly hard. His, his willingness to move from contest to contest, repeat efforts in a, in a, in a passage of play is really important. Nunes goes with a long ball. Through for another behind. They're just happy to keep it in their front half now, Frankston. They know that they've got the win, so they just want to keep the territory and go from there. Maybe kicking behind is the better option for them now. Yes, yeah, high more. Kick 12-16. Today, there's a bit of a push out. It'll be a Port Melbourne free kick. And Baker Smith has it. Now he's short on options because there's plenty of one-on-ones down the ground. Needs to be precise and isn't. So he'll have another go. Runs into the tackle. The first one was great. The second one was even better. And a bit of push and shove as well. Frustration coming out for the Port Melbourne players. Hoford gets it down. It does spill free. And then again from Rankin. But it's out into open space. And it's going to be Moran. Moran tracking it to the line. Shot the handball back. We've got a few numbers here. The Borough, Machete, looking for Miller. Did well. Anastasio, he's kicking to no one in particular. Goodness me, O'Leary takes the mark. Straight to O'Leary. He did spot up a play. It was just his opposition. As they go around to the grandstand side here to the Dolphins. Johnson, good to see him back out on the ground. Into the path of Butland. It's been excellent today. Four goals for him. Made to earn this kick is Johnson. So he looks up. And why don't you go long? It's been the modus operandi today for the Dolphins and it's worked particularly well. Marotta going around the body for a behind. That would have been a stunning goal had that come off. But I think what's really important for Frankston is that there was a worry in that first quarter that their inaccuracy would come back to bite them. And it felt in the third quarter like potentially that's what was going to happen. But they were able to withstand that tide and just pile it on since then. That Just the willingness to work hard and know that it's a four-quarter game, which sounds cliche, but you play, you have to play hard for four quarters if you're going to win a match of football, and they've absolutely done that. Ball wide here, O'Leary. Looking forward to just play out time now. Frankston, well, they don't want to, they want some more. And so does Jack Nunes. He's going to potentially have a crack at his third goal. He had a shot from a similar spot at the other end of the ground first quarter, didn't he? 
Uh, he did, Went I narrow. think, yeah. As we're into time on in this final term, may as well take as much time as you like. Outside 50. It's going to go to the left again. Even In fact, it's missed narrow. a lot. Yep. The distance was definitely not an issue, though. So Rankin to bring the footy back into play. Nope, he's going to handball. He's going to hand it over. He wants to be the receiver of it. Well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Says to Tom Highmore, thanks for that. That worked perfectly. Well done. Kick. Oh, no, that hasn't worked perfectly. And good hands to have it in if you're a Dolphins fan. Josh Butland has kicked four goals today. A chance at number five. And to soak up 30 seconds on the clock as well. Every, he knows that his teammates are flagging a little bit. Everyone's a bit tired, so help them get to that final quarter. So in he comes. Icing on the cake. Nope, that's not going to happen, but it hasn't reached the line yet. That's going to be thrown in. It was so off target that it looked like he was actually just trying to hit up a teammate. So we wait for this footy to come back in. As I mentioned, Frankston with two weeks off now with the state game break. For... Borough, they have a, a date with Casey coming up in two weeks' time. Quick kick out of the pack, another goal! This time Angus Grant getting in on the fun. Strong body work, he got the footy and did what he had to do. He saw goals, he went for it and was successful. Or not. Might have been touched. We were all looking. We were all getting ready. We are all back to the middle. May still end up that way. Let's see. Anastasia's going to get it on the end of this. Can they make the pay on the turnover? Into the middle of the ground is dangerous. It's two on one. Here is Grant. He'll be fired up. I thought that was a goal. The kick. Deep inside 50. Here's Butland. Twisting. Turning. Assessing. Kick across the ground wasn't the greatest, but they've got the numbers. There they have so many numbers lining up here. Do the Dolphins. Just dispossessed there was the skipper in Minot. And now the tackling pressure is enormous. We love to see forward lines share it around and give each other a go, get it into a better position. Sometimes it just over-possess the footy a little bit to invite the pressure, which is what just happened there. Port Melbourne was able to get numbers. And this quick kick out of the pack by Matt Johnson he is out of bounds on the full. So now we are playing out time here, Gemma. Very much so, but they've got Barlow. Franks have got Barlow sitting as their defensive anchor, just organising the back line. Not really playing body on. Coughlin to Anastasio. Hasn't really ignited as I was expecting today. As you were hoping. Which is somewhat disappointing. <laughs> uh, considering I don't do that many Port Melbourne games. I have to just park myself on a couple more to see what happens. <laughs> High more. So, it'll be a 0 and 2 start for Port Melbourne. A 1 and 1 start to the season for Frankston. This Voss just rides the bump. Minot was trying to come through to get that path to goal. Not successful. Here's Smith. Here they go. Anastasio's on his bike. They're ignoring him, and now he has a go. Breaks the tackle. Looking to break the second. There's three Port Melbourne players lining up, and Cingarello. A chance at number three for him. He's presented well in the forward half. The ball just hasn't come in the way that, it, that would give him the best advantage, but he's worked hard, especially for a big man. He's done well at ground level too. So even if he misses this one, he's had a strong day. He has, and kicked three last week in the loss to Southport. So a chance here for his third. Looks good off the boot. Yeah, it looks very good. It's a great kick. So goal number three for him. 
And so it is now a 31-point margin here at Northport. Is he the only player that gets a song played after just No, like... no, they've been having the songs throughout. Oh, if I completely missed that. Yes, yeah, but it's only has. been in something that started, I think, in the second half. Okay, after the, the green chilies finished? Yes, and <laughs> we've had it all today. We've had it all. What a magnificent day it has been. It sounds like we're mocking them. We genuinely love yes. the green chilies. Yes, yes. Middle Park Primary School, we're in the house. I wish when I was in primary school I was that good. I feel like uh, a deep dive into Gemma Bastiani's music career at primary school in the offing and the Say to Play podcast this week. <laughs> Let's mark that one down, Joey. <laughs> As we continue on, working his way through his gowers, just fumbled at the crucial moment. Gray, excellent for Frankston. Uh, question with notice to Gemma about who Frankston's best player has been, in your opinion, today. Ooh. As Reedy goes around the body, because I feel there's plenty that would be in the mix for that. Hooper overrunning the footy. Back out. Murphy. It would have to be up there, I would say. Anyway, ball turned over. And into the middle they go. Things opening up. Machete just goes long. Singarello is goal side, takes the mark. He plays on, sharing the love, and Billy Gowers gets on the goal sheets. What's his song? <laughs> I think it's just the same thing they're putting up and down, but we'll see. <laughs> I hope they've given up on the music. It's done. So I've got three for you. Am I allowed to pick yes, three? Yes, go for it. So it's hard to go past Butland, who has kicked the four goals and been a real presence in attack, but... As I mentioned earlier, I've really liked O'Leary's game coming out of the back half. He's very good at making a quick decision as to whether he needs to play that defensive role or whether he's able to get on his bike and attack, and he moves really beautifully across the ground. 20 disposals too for him today. Yes, and then Murphy is the other one who's been the leading possession winner for them since the start of the game, had the 25, four tackles. He's just been involved in everything, and he's he's been a crucial part of that midfield dominance when they were using it to get on top in the game. Totally concur. He's been sensational. Anastasio across will find Hurd. Needs to get going. Rossman, Rankin, uh, didn't quite get to him. Rossman's got to lay the tackle. Did a good job. Now the ball just stays in its place. Smith, Hurd again turns over the footy. Reedy. Just in front of us here, Matt Johnson again. He's just copping knocks from everywhere, Matt Johnson. It's been, a, been a big day for him. He's in a bit of trouble again. You feel that the job's done now, so he probably could come from the ground and just have the rest of the afternoon off. The only problem is the ball's on the opposite side of the ground from the interchange bridge, so he goes and lays a tackle. That gives you some sort of set, sign of how tough he is, Matt Johnson. He'll be one that's very glad they've got the two weeks off. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so counting down to full time. It's been a big quarter for Frankston. They've kicked four goals. Four goals to three now. And we're almost back to where we were at three-quarter time. Anastasio goes up. This ball... Right, everyone, and this is going to be another ball up. As Jackson Voss just gets to his feet. There's a lot of Vosses in footy, aren't there? There are. Flockhart at the back. No one actually wanted to pick up the footy in the end. Another stoppage. Third. It's held in again. So we're just playing repeat stoppages till the end here, it seems. If you're Frankston, this is the way to just wind down the clock. Yep. Three seconds at the time. Here's Anastasio. Didn't hit it the way he wanted to. And O'Leary takes full advantage at half back. He's cramping. He is. He just He's trying to stretch it out. He knows he's, <laughs> he's doing his level best here. Well done to him. We laugh about cramps, but they can be oh, absolutely yes. excruciating. So Josh Smith. Voss. 
Wider we go. So winding down at ETU Stadium, Stainthorpe. Milne. Now, just again, just taking time. Now, kick going long. Let's fly there from Watson. Couldn't quite trap it. We'll have it thrown in. Still a reasonably populated Norm Goss stand as some folks are making their way for the exit and heading into the Easter long weekend and potentially holiday time for everyone except my co-commentator who has 17 <laughs> matches to do between now and Monday. We and love exaggerations. Up for the, I've told you a billion times to stop exaggerating as <laughs> be thrown up again. Might feel like that though for you, Gemma, by the end of the weekend. Nearly at halfway. Two out of five. Hey, bad. And that's too high, Igniter. Too high. That's Quirk. Takes the mark and, or takes the free kick, I should say. Going by the inventive nickname of Quirky. And works back again. Inside 50 they go. Off hands, Butland. Can he get a fifth? Yes, he can. He's fifth for the day. And that tops off what's been a fantastic four-quarter performance from Frankston. Yeah, he didn't kick any last week, and he's come out and kicked five today in a seriously commanding performance. I've just loved his presence in that forward line. He's obviously tall and physical, but the way he attacks the footy in the air, the way he forces his defender to actually physically defend him, he's a, a dangerous player in the forward half that you have to be constantly accountable to, and he's made the most of it. Well, can they kick over the 100 points? That'll be, I guess, the, the last little thing to tick off the list from what's been a successful day for the Frankston Dolphins. like Box Hills women did last week. Over the ton. One by 104 points or something. As that's a push out. Is this going to be downfield? No, it's going to be for the captain, Harvey Hooper. He's going to have to take the kick. Will he be one of those players to get into the VFL state team? Based on today's form, you'd have to say yes, no? Yeah, as... Uh, being played at Glenelg next week. Remember a full round of Rebel VFLW to be played. Anastasio around the body. Needs a friendly bounce. Not going to get one. Gray will clear the area. Temporarily, it seems. Nice little juggling mark by Coglin. And his kick across the ground. Murphy takes the mark at half back. Jimmy mentioned being sensational today, as has Milne. Oh dear. As you say that. As Vickers will go over the top. And Cingarello will go over the top again, sharing, scaring. And in the end, running through his guy Barnes to kick the goal. Let's see if we get a response from our ground announcer. No. Nope, the answer to that is no, we're not. <laughs> but that's, that's true from Cingarello, who he could have kicked five goals today as well, but he's opted to pass that off to teammates. You love to see it. He's played a much better game than his stat line would suggest, and his teammates will absolutely love him for it, and they'll absolutely get around him. Yeah, I agree. And, I mean, the thing is also for time, I mean, not that we're playing, just playing out time here, but to, to speed things up a touch, but selfless play. The way we're speaking, and the air has kind of gone out of this game late, it is actually only a 25-point margin. So it's not... They haven't been blown out of the water. They could have been, given the inaccuracy from Frankston. But Port Melbourne hasn't been blown out of the water completely. No, they've got a couple late. It's just in those crucial moments when the game was potentially up for grabs that they struggled. But not so the Frankston Dolphins. A great Good Friday win for them. 13-18-96 to 11-5-71. A fantastic performance. And they go to one and one on the season. Port Melbourne, though, winless to start season 2024. And Jim Bassiani, 
They did a great job. They were challenged, particularly in that third quarter, but they got it done in the 